Climate change is not a distant threat. It's happening now. But what can we do about it? I would say the number one would probably be stop dumping carbon into the atmosphere. Meet Dr. Kimberly R. Miner, a climate scientist and program manager at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab. Kimberly shares her insights on the top three actions we can take to combat climate change, the role of biodiversity in addressing the crisis, and the future of climate science. If you are concerned about our planet's future and want to understand what steps we can take to mitigate climate change, this clip is for you. Subscribe to the channel for more insightful conversations with leading experts like Kimberly. Together we can learn, grow and take action. Now let's dive into the clip. Enjoy. It's hard to say just three, but let's do do it from the top of my head. I would say the number one would probably be stop dumping carbon into the atmosphere. Mm. Probably number two would be to um, dedicate land space to wilderness um, or to indigenous stewardship. So meaning that we don't develop things. We don't cut down forests and build apartment buildings. We don't turn a bunch of the Arctic into mines, which is a terrible idea that some people are suggesting. Um, we preserve a huge amount of the earth's surface, or like I, I mentioned, um, give it to back to indigenous stewardship. Um, and then probably the third thing is just to make sure that everyone knows, you know, speaking to friends, speaking to family members, speaking to all of our relations, to make sure that we are all in conversation about the reality of what's happening on the planet where we live, the only planet where we live, the only planet we have the capability to live on, we cannot move to Mars. We need to discuss with each other what's happening and, and what that means for us you know, in our daily lives, for our children, for our grandchildren, and for all other species, children and grandchildren. Taking the carbon out of the atmosphere, I always thought uh, planting trees might be a way out. And you mentioned as the second measure that uh, wilderness, that um, giving back up, uh, rebuilding the wilderness might be part of the solution. Can you explain it a little bit more in detail? Sure. So it really depends on the regional ecosystem. And we we are getting a little bit close to time, um, but there's mm. a bunch of different articles and studies out there um, that show that not only trees, but lots and lots of different uh, plant species uptake carbon. So it could be seaweed, it could be uh, tundra, which is, you know, land with mm. different plants on it, meadows. Um, that's basically what a lot of plants eat. And so in order to have this regeneration, I guess, if you will, of the atmosphere, moving our planet back to a more stable state, it is going to be critically important to make sure that we preserve a huge amount of the animal, the plant species in a way that we haven't done in the last hundred years. It's also really important for the biodiversity uh, crisis for obvious reasons. Everyone needs somewhere to live. That includes if you are a tree frog or if you are a human person. When we talk about the future of, of climate science, where do you see it evolving in the next five to 10 years? Well, there's a lot of people who are moving into the earth and climate space, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. There's um, people of all sectors, all disciplines, all backgrounds that are needed. We need um, communicators. We need people, like I said, who are um, taking action. We need researchers, we need thinkers, we need planners, we need artists, we need so many artists. Um, there are all sorts of people who are moving into this uh, field and we need them all there. We all need to be thinking about climate change and the way that it impacts our industries, our lives, because it's going to, and it will be much, much better for us to think about it now than you know as the hurricane uh, hits, whether it's metaphorical or actual. Um, I think that in the next few years, we're going to see an influx of more people, like I mentioned, but we're also potentially going to see more and more talent 
um, maturing for people who are just coming out of graduate school. And there is way more diversity, like I mentioned, uh, in this field than there ever has been in the Western sciences in the past. And that is going to really benefit us. It's going to really benefit us to have people come from different backgrounds and uh, have different stories in their lives and different ways of thinking so that it can really make us more diverse uh, more ingenious, think of more ideas, have better brainstorming sessions. And I'm really looking forward to that. I'm also really uh, looking forward to the integration of indigenous knowledge. So Western science has for a long time really dominated this conversation mm -hmm. and speak very, very loudly. But we have a bunch of people who are very, very good at science that looks different than Western science. It's not necessarily from the Enlightenment. It's from time immemorial, time much, much older than that. And I think that there's a huge drive and importance from those conversations that I'm looking forward um, to emerging even more strongly in the literature and just in the day-to-day -day media. This was an insightful discussion with Dr. Kimberly Miner, exploring the top actions to combat climate change, the role of biodiversity, and the future of climate science. Did you find this content valuable? Then please, please share it with your network, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment. Your engagement helps these platform grow and attract more expert speakers to deliver valuable content on deep tech, climate tech, life sciences, biotech, and health. Don't forget to check out the sponsors in the link in the description. Their support is vital in funding this project and bringing these conversations to you. Thank you for your time and support. Enjoy the rest of your day.